Okay, good afternoon to the Wellcoin Talk community. Today we have an AMA with Crypto Comedy Club here to speak about the project is Logan Densho and Connecticut Crypto. Um, so yeah, if we could just maybe start with the core team's background and experience with crypto, that'd be great, guys. Right. Uh, so my name is Logan Brandt. I'm CEO of the Crypto Comedy Club. Um, it was kind of my idea. I brought this the team in on board with me. Um, been in crypto for about a year. Um, been pretty much an addiction the whole time. Uh, worked for a few different call groups and stuff. You know, shield for different projects. Been investing in a lot of different things and trading and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty familiar with the the you know, the space and I've got quite a bit of connections on telegram and stuff like that already. So it's been a, it's been a benefit to uh, deciding to launch this project. Um, but yeah, that's basically, I mean, I'm 33, been married 15 years, got a 12 year old kid that's turning 13 next month. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Do the math. Yeah. You were oh yeah. We were together. <laughs> no, no, no. 33, 15 yeah. years. Or yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I was eighteen. Yeah, we were eighteen Middle when school. I got together. Yeah, you made me freaking second guess myself. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's me. I'll pass it on to, to Connecticut. He's our uh, blockchain developer. Hey, um, yeah. So my name is Dan, uh, or Connecticut Crypto. Uh, I'm Dan Hovey. Um, so yeah, I met Logan in an investment group. P pretty much, we I've been investing in crypto for about five years. Um, I uh, went to University of Connecticut, uh, studied uh, mechanical engineering. Um, so I've not, been, I didn't have a computer background per se. You do have to take some computer engineering courses in order to fulfill the requirements uh, to finish school. Uh, so I took a lot of C++. When I got, you know, five years ago when I started investing, when smart contracts coming uh, started coming out, I was really taken back, especially, you know, SafeMoon, which... Uh, which weren't the first to do it, but certainly the first that we all kind of probably recognize with smart contracts. And uh, the solidity code to me was unbelievable. And the concept of, of tying that in with economics was was just very interesting. So um, I learned, uh, you know, using some of my background, I learned how to write solidity code. And uh, and so I'd invested in a lot of different uh, projects on the BSC, um, was in a bunch of whale groups and that's how I kind of met Logan and some of the other people in a private investing group that we're a part of. And, uh, Logan's being a little bit humble, but when he, when he came up with this idea, um, it really is a great sounding idea. And me being an investor was like, wow, that's really, really great. And he asked if there was someone that could uh, help with the contract side of it. And of course I had that ability and, um, you know, I, I, I donated my services because I believed in the project so much so that I didn't just want to kind of wham, bam, right and be done. I wanted to be a part of it. Um, we, by chance, had a third member in our investment group who was a VR dev, which his name is Solar. He's not on the call right now, um, but uh, he was a VR dev. So it, it just kind of all fell into place. He knew Densho as a freelancer. Um, so it fell into place, uh, something personal about me. So I'm, uh, I'm married, uh, very happily married. And I have a five-year-old daughter, which, um, completely rules my entire world, uh, for all those dads out there with daughters, um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, we're like super excited about this. We've been working on this for a few months now and, uh, we really, it's really exciting to see the development from what started as an idea earlier this year to Dencho being in an AMA in an asset that we own. Um, so I'll let Dencho tell you a little bit about the VR space and kind of the stuff that gets his uh, blood pressure going. Yeah, I'm Dencho. Yeah, I'm trapped in a basement against my will making VR prototypes, but it's okay. Does it get crackers? Um, <laughs> but he gave you crackers. I've been, uh, that's all they feed me. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> Yeah, um, I've been freelancing with Unity Engine for about 10 years, you know, uh, and uh, started VR about five years ago. And that's just kind of been my specialty since then because it's the future. And yeah, it's real fun. Yeah, computer science degree, all that shit. Yep. <laughs> He's our spokesman. Cool. Um, so yeah, can we go into the metaverse you plan on building the VR comedy clubs will be in there and 
it's going to be for established comedians and there'll be open mic nights for new and up and coming comedians as well. It sounds really cool. Yeah. Sir. Do you want me to break it, break that kind of down for you a little bit or was that? Yeah. Yeah. That'd uh, be great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just making sure I wasn't sure if it was a question or not. Uh, yeah, man. So this is going to like, uh, this is like the first of its kind. There is nothing else like this. Um, this is going to be a game changer in my opinion on the blockchain because you like said we're the very first comedy club, you know, virtual reality powered by the blockchain. There's nothing else. Um, yeah, we're going to have the big headlining nights with, you know, the big, uh, you know, names that you recognize and stuff, the famous people and everything, you know, from all over the world, not just from here in America where we're, where we're kind of located. Um, then we're going to have, you know, featured nights for the comedians that have been doing it several years, but they're not big and famous yet. But, you know, they're funny. They have their, you know, they have a following and stuff. And then, of course, yeah, we're going to have the open mic nights for, you know, open mic comedians that are just starting out. And, you know, for anybody in the community that wants to sign up and give it a try, too. So it's going to be a lot of fun for people to, uh, you know, get involved in that. Cause the audience is going to get to vote on those nights and, uh, you know, the winners of the open mics get prizes and stuff. So, you know, it'll be yeah, a lot of incentive for people to participate um but yeah man this is gonna be this is gonna be so much fun because there's really no limit to what we can do with this um there's gonna be like we're building our own club like it's gonna have a you know a lobby we're gonna have mini games in it we're gonna have an atm in the virtual reality space where you can purchase our tokens which is wild um you know we're gonna have a, you know, a bar like an in-game store that you can buy like in-game nfts and you know stuff for your avatar to customize it we're gonna have multiple different rooms with different you know settings different vibes different sizes and everything you know different styles of comedy uh you know stand up improv uh you know which is kind of like whose line is it anyway if you heard of that show uh, you know sketch comedy you know saturday night live you know, sketch comedy is going to be wild because, I mean, you can you can do anything in, you know, VR. You can have any, you know, prop that you want. You can, you know, make any kind of thing just disappear. You can do all kinds of stuff. You know, impressionists are going to be, uh, you're going to love this because they're going to be able to be in the avatar of the person they're impersonating. You know, that's going to be, I mean, that's going to be wild when it comes to impersonations, you know, which is so much fun. So, yeah, man, there's like, I mean, there's no limit to, you know, what we can do on this. And being that we're running it on our own server, we're not beholden to anybody else. Uh, you know, we didn't go and just buy something on Decentraland Sandbox or something and then tie ourselves to a project where if they fail, we're kind of screwed. So we're running it solo to the point where, you know, down the road, whenever, you know, some of those big, you know, platforms really, we figure out who comes out on top then we can go with those or we can take offers from, you know, different platforms, you know, and see which one fits us the best and gives us, you know, and our holders, you know, the best benefit. So how does the LOL token tie in? Will that be used inside the uh, comedy clubs uh, for purchasing tickets for investors? Yeah, yeah. it's essentially so, the, it's the, it's the currency in which this, that will fuel this, this uh, environment. Right. So, mm -hmm. You know, like to, to get it right down to, to ground level to understand. So as a as a user or as a holder, how do you use this? Right. So like, how do you, how does this apply to you as a holder? Which is a good question. Right. So say you purchase tokens, you can you now have access to this club, which as time progresses, we'll add more and more assets to whether it's a lobby like Logan was saying, a bar, a merch store. It's uh, basically an NFT marketplace where you can buy, um, so say you you put your headset in, you're a holder, you go into this comedy club, you go into the lobby, you see all the other people that are holders in there as well. You go up to the merch store and you find a, a, an NFT that's a tomato, we'll say. So you buy that with our token, and then you can use that NFT as an in-game item. So say we're doing an open mic night and you wanna throw a tomato at the performer or at someone in the crowd. You just throw your NFT at the at the person, um, and so that's that's kind of an interesting take on NFT, where it's going to be. A, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, uh, VR poker or also VR poker. Uh, was it po There's a VR poker game. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. <laughs> poker Stars, poker, poker VR All Stars, or something like that. Yeah, Poker Stars VR. 
And I don't know if you ever played it, but we all, it's a casino that you go to in VR and they have blackjack and slot machines and, and, uh, and uh, poker games. And, and you go there and you can play a real round of poker with seven other people. Right. But one of the fun things about that, and this is kind of where this site came from is while you're sitting waiting for your turn to make a decision in poker, you can go to their store and buy swords, uh, miniature donkeys uh cigarettes uh and then you can use all of those items within the game you can buy things to customize your avatar um so but obviously since we're in blockchain we can utilize and we can utilize those in-game items as nfts and then those are tied to your account and you can use them in this space so you can see that there's going to be i mean look at all the money that games like uh, fortnite make um being a free game, right? They make money because people are customizing their avatars. So you can see there's going to be a lot of trading volume when it comes to this this uh, this token being spent. Now, obviously, volume is good for holders um, because they get a they get a cut of that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the vision of how you're going to be able to utilize that space. Obviously, when we have comedians booked, you'll be able to purchase tickets for the event. Um, if you carry certain number, if you hold a certain number of tokens, we'll have different tiers. So if you are a VIP status uh, token holder, you'll get free access to shows that you want to go to backstage to meet the comedian after the show or before the show, front row seats, all that stuff. Um, and that will incentivize people to hold or try to get to the next tier to so spend money to buy more, right? It's kind of that big loop. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that this has been kind of, I think this has resonated well with the different AMAs that we've done. I think the strongest thing about this project from the eyes of an investor, which is where we all started as investors, well, not Dan Chow, he doesn't even understand what crypto is, but um, so we're taking uh, we're taking a investor's approach to this. We've all been in great projects before where the deliverable sounds awesome. It's such a great idea. We get into pre-sale and we, we invest in it. We're like, well, this is awesome. I can't wait till they build this blah, blah, blah utility. And then we start reaping the benefits. And then what happens is, is that the use case is so expensive to actually come to fruition that the projects need all this capital capital to actually send their deliverable out to the world. And they never quite get enough capital. And then they have to start spending money on marketing to try to hope they get the volume to get the capital to actually do the deliverable. And then inevitably what happens is people get impatient, people start selling their tokens, and then there's no more support. Um, and once that happens, the deliverable never happens, project dies, and everyone's like, man, that was such a great idea. It's too bad it didn't come by. So we, we're in an advantage here because we don't need any capital capital to launch our deliverable. The four people on our dev team all have the internal talent and the equipment to do this. It just takes time. So we're continually adding things. And we'll have deliverables this summer. We'll have beta testing for pre-sale holders and all sorts of things. But we're never we don't we're not counting on capital to make it. So this is going to happen. And you want to get in early because the earlier you are, the better the price is going to be. But we don't need a massive pump or a huge pre-sale or any of this stuff that a lot of projects need to really ultimately survive. And they can just sell you a line of shit that they're so close to the deliverable and they just need something else. And like we don't we don't need money to do that. We have VR devs that we don't have to freelance. They, they are part of this team. They work for the team. Um, and they only get paid if the, if, they, if the project does well. So they have all the incentive in the world to do it. We don't even let Dencho out of the basement unless he does at least four assets before breakfast. That's great. So, yeah, so you, there's no uh, no outsourcing. Then you're going to build it all in-house, uh, the, the Metaverse comedy clubs, yeah. Yeah, you know, as we get bigger, we may, you know, as we get bigger, we can scale, right? And the good thing about, software development in, in this space is that we don't need to bring on more team members. So say we wanted to build a restaurant, a part of our comedy club, and it was going to take a thousand man hours uh, and we could dedicate our time to it. We could just take money from a marketing wallet or a development wallet and then just pay a freelancer to do it for us and give us the asset. Um, and a lot of the software that's going to end up integrating into our project that's going to be incredible Microsoft or Google, they're developing the software and then we just have to purchase the DRM for it. Um, and one example of that is this is going to be an international uh, project, right? So right now there's software that already exists. We didn't develop it. The world did because there's a lot of 
R&D going into metaverse applications. For, uh, say, a Vietnamese comedian is speaking, us as English speakers can see what they're saying in subtitles. Now, that doesn't really translate super well to comedy, but that software exists. Now, software that's currently in development is when when say you say we had a vietnamese uh picture this you're you're in our bar and there's a dark game and so you go to the dark game and you're an american and you speak english and the person next to you is filipino and he speaks tagalog well the software is being developed to where i can speak in english and the filipino young man can hear my voice in tagalog in his in his headset and then when he speaks in tagalog into his mic it's converted and audibly is english in my headset we don't we are not smart enough to know how to make that okay but the but google and facebook or meta or whatever you want to call them they're developing all these applications already and they spend a lot of money in r d to make them and then when they actually make it the way that they reason why they do it is because people then buy the application and use it in their own protocol which is where we come in right we spend 1500 bucks to get that feature in uh in our project and Dencho and Solar, they integrate it. And that's it. So we don't have to do anything there except for just buy the, the DRM to, to now add that stuff to our application. Um, that's just one very small example, but you can kind of see how incredible that is and what's going to be possible in within our, our metaverse. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know it's you were going to do shows in other languages. So that probably answers that question for me. Will there be subtitles for international um people tuning into the comedy shows yeah if it's in a different language to theirs yeah, yeah subtitles yeah. at first because that that exists um but that's not the the end goal as soon as that that software's developed we have no issues just integrating it and then a couple of the other software you know items that are in development right now that we're going to be able to you know integrate into this and make it extremely realistic um is the eye tracking the facial tracking so you're really going to be able to track all the emotions and everything, which is, you know, facial tracking and expressions is huge in comedy. And they're even doing like the, the 3D sound, which is going to be, I mean, just absolutely mind blowing. Like you're, you're going to be able to stand in one side of our club and somebody on the other side of the club is talking and they're going to actually sound like they're on the other side of the room. They're not going to be just right here in your headset you know, as loud as everybody else, it's, it's going to be exactly like that. So if somebody's on stage and they're bombing, you could lean over to your neighbor and be like, man, this guy sucks. And that person's going to be the only one that hears you, you know what I mean? Which is, I mean, that's just wild how realistic this stuff is going to be really, really soon. Like the stuff that they're coming out with to make this even more realistic is just crazy. Great. Yeah. yeah um, I was going to say probably, yeah. even, even, probably one other piece of software that's going to be uh, uh, crucial that's that's almost uh, is almost been released is there's there's ones now where you can actually take you, from a single photo create a full avatar, um, which is going to be super useful when we're talking about comedians. We could literally Google a picture of them, and then the software will design their avatar to be lifelike. Yeah. How <clears throat> how will investors? go into the metaverse will they need to hold so many tokens or an nft or will it be free to go into the metaverse but then in the future if they want to buy a, a comedy show to watch uh, they'd use the token so yeah um you're gonna need to be a, like uh like i said i'm pretty sure you're gonna need to be a holder to like just you know just enter the club and hang out and stuff like that but um you're gonna be a, a you know once you purchase a ticket to a show the ticket's basically going to be like a one-time use code. So you're going to get that ticket, code, whatever, um, and then you're going to put on, you know, your Oculus. You're going to sign into our platform, use that code, and then you're in, you know. But once you use that code, it's 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 invalid, so you can't share it around with a bunch of people, um, which is obviously important for the, you know, comedians and the ticket sales. So, you know, like I said, like, go, sorry. Um, and I'm wondering, what's the sort of profit share going to be and where will the profits go? Will some go back into buyback and burns for the tokens or to investors? Um, and, yeah, what's the profit share split with, with the established comedians or new up-and-coming comedians? And you're going to be more competitive than a, a physical because virtuals, um, you know, once it's built, it's sort of uh, very cheap to run. 
Right. So there's a couple different aspects to that question. So yeah, with the when it comes to the comedians and how we pay them, it's definitely we're definitely going to be able to be extremely competitive in how much we pay them versus, you know, other clubs and stuff like that. And I mean, honestly, they'll probably end up making more money with us, uh, to be frank. But, um, you know, that's going to depend on, you know, a case by case basis, depending on the comedian, you know, like that's going to be a deal that's worked out with them, you know, every time that we book somebody, um, you know, which is also going to, you know, dictate the ticket sales you know if we get somebody that's extremely famous and we have to pay a lot of money then the ticket sales are going to be a little bit more um we are always going to strive to keep our ticket sales as cheap as possible because we want it to be you know accessible for everybody um but at the end of the day you know we have to you know it is a business you know um and then as far as the profit like you know where the profits and stuff come in for the holders there's going to be much you know there's going to be a bunch of different ways for one you know we have one percent reflections it isn't much but it's you know it's good for those long-term holders that can you know pay for your tickets or you know in-game nfts and stuff without having to sell any of your supply we're going to be offering staking and farming for the long-term holders to really you know get that benefit um and then you know like when we start getting into the marketing side of this and everything, it's really going to kind of explain why this is such a bullish project. And, you know, once people really start to, you know, realize this and, you know, take notice, it's, it's going to get pretty wild in my opinion. You know, it may, it's, it, it may not happen on day one and that's totally fine. Like you said, we don't really have to have that to make this happen because we're going to run shows. We are going to have comedians. It does not matter what happens after the launch, it doesn't matter what the chart does. It doesn't matter. This is going to happen, period. And once people see that, it's going to get sh extremely bullish. Um, you know, and then as far as, you know, burning, we uh, we don't have a specific, uh, you know, burn mechanism in place because we're not really, you know, a deflationary token. We're not a meme token. Uh, you know, we're not, you know, like this is a legitimate project with, you know, real, real world applications. So we're not trying to, you know, create any like, you know, fake hype fake high fake pumps or anything like that but yeah we will i mean we're, we're we still probably will be doing you know some uh you know manual buybacks and burns and stuff like that with the ticket sales you know and everything because we like we want this to be as good for the holders and as good for the comedians as possible like that's that's the i mean that's the ultimate goal you know for this um but like i said when it do, does come to those you know burns and buybacks and all that we won't be doing it in any massive amounts, you know, creating any fake pumps on the chart. We also won't be announcing it ahead of time. So people can't, you know, plan accordingly to dump on anything. Um, like I said, we don't need to create any fake hype because it's, it's going to come, you know? So. Yeah. It's a utility token. So we're not, we're not, we're not <clears throat> interested really in mechanisms that manipulate the chart positive or negative whenever there's, because we have reflections built into the token, when there's volume of people purchasing and buying things, our holders are getting rewarded for that. Um, our staking pools will actually allow reflections to still happen while you're staked. And a lot of times you can't do that where you stake your tokens and they're out of your wallet, but they'll still be available for reflections. Looking at the white paper and there's some cool features inside the metaverse that you're going to have performing acts can you individual hecklers which might bring in some really big comedy acts that will just want that power that they can't have that in the real world and they don't have to jump right. on a plane and go to a physical uh, gig they can do it from the living room maybe you know and i'm just wondering how in the future you're approaching the the bigger comedians and new and upcoming comedians is someone on the team going to be doing that uh, approaching people yeah that's the fun part. Um, that's the fun part about this and that thing that the thing that makes this like this, that, that this is going to work. And uh, so, yeah, we already I mean, the networking with the comedians has basically been my my job as of right now. Uh, Dan Connecticut, he's going to be helping me with it, you know, going through the future. But he's been extremely busy with contract right now. Um, but, yeah, I've been doing a lot of networking. I've reached out and already spoken with quite a few comedians and I've gotten a lot of good positive feedback. Um, we've even gotten followed by some blue check comedians that are appearing on MTV and stuff like that to follow us and even go out of their way and message us, um, which is pretty, pretty huge already. Um, we already have two comedians that are working with us on this. Um, they're going to be helping with the beta testing. They're going to be doing consulting work with us to really, you know, gear this as much towards the comedians like as possible because you know if they're happy then we're good 
these two guys are one's name is Hans Kim and one's name is David Lucas. Um, if you haven't heard of them, you should definitely Google them. Um, both of these guys are regulars on uh, Kill Tony podcast, which is the number one live uh, comedy podcast in the world. Both of them have been mentioned and praised very highly multiple times by Joe Rogan on the Joe Rogan podcast, which is obviously the biggest podcast in the world. And both of them open for all of the biggest names in comedy here in the United States. Um, you know, names like Ron White, Dave Chappelle, you know, Joe Rogan, Louis C.K., Bert Kreischer. Um, you know, and they're like I said, they're all good friends with like, these are the people that they hang out with constantly. So we are we have we already have great connections that have great connections. You know what I mean? Like. Right. We're super, super lucky to have these guys already, um, you know, and all, at the end of the day, all we have to do is make these guys happy where they're having fun. They're enjoying themselves and they're making money. And we're golden because we're already a foot in the door to, like I said, literally the biggest names. You know, it, all it would take is one mention of us, just a mention of us on a Joe Rogan podcast for this to go parabolic. Yeah, and the other thing about this, too, and I don't know if Logan already mentioned this, but. You know, so we have we have two main contract wallets, right? So we have a marketing wallet, which I think people are pretty familiar with. Uh, and then we have a talent acquisition wallet, which is just set aside for, um, you know, hiring comedians. Um, now, when we hire a comedian, what happens, right? So say, uh, now think about some of these projects you've been a part of. They spend a million dollars on a Logan Paul tweet, and then Logan Paul tweets something, and people just don't. They, they never make a million dollars right back. It's just kind of a desperate act. So what if you paid a comedian who's used to getting ten to $15,000 a show and had to travel to a venue? Say you said, we're going to pay you ten to $15,000 and you don't have to leave the house. Um, if you don't have a headset, fine. We'll just mail you an Oculus headset. That's just a gift, right? 300 bucks, who cares? But you can see how the crypto economy is so far in our favor because the amount of money that we we're used to spending in marketing for crypto project projects is absurd amounts of money, right? But when you're hiring comedians, the, the 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 scale is so much lower than what you're doing in crypto space normally. Ten to fifteen thousand dollars is not a lot of money in marketing for a crypto project, but it is a ton of money when you're booking talent. And what happens when you book that comedian? What does he do, right? So he promotes it everywhere because they want to be seen by people. And this is a cool idea, right? Obviously, we may be a little biased, but this is definitely weird and unique enough to where a comedian's going to be like, hey, this is super weird. I'm performing in virtual reality in the metaverse. Of course, they're going to push that all over their socials. So we didn't even have to spend a marketing dollar. We spent just the money that's going to that's going to be a part of our utility, right? To have comedians come in. We didn't have to spend any marketing money and they're marketing the project because that's what they do. They promote themselves because that's how they make money. So um, that is a really unique advantage to where our utility actually is probably our most powerful marketing tool. Great, my name's Finn Kalaik. I was just about to ask about that. I, mean, I imagine if you give, say, a free concert to uh, Chris Rock, and then he tweeted that out to his millions of fans, um, yeah, and all that free marketing for the the token and the uh, metaverse, uh, yeah, it'll just uh, blow it up. And like I say, it's not cost you a, a dime. And Chris Rock doesn't have any, um, has no ability to get struck by Will Smith in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, I, I can mute Will Smith in the metaverse, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. even if he's there, he won't feel the slap. <laughs> um, so going over the staking pool, is that going to be locked or unlocked staking for investors? How does that work? Well, we're going to, we're, so we're going to, we're not interested in like you know some projects i guess are trying to we're not a staking or farming project right that's not a part of our utility so we're going to be utilizing a project i'm not sure if you're familiar with called brew labs um they're the ones who handled our audit they also have um, uh staking and farming pools that we're going to utilize um I've, I've used them for a couple other investments that i've made and i've always been happy with their their pools and farms and then it gets our project in front of their people and they're getting they're actually growing quite a bit recently um they're actually their their money their, their coin has been, done, done, been doing really well the last month and a half but we thought that, that would be smart are you saying are you saying do we have to lock for x number of time 
Yeah, yeah, would it be like locked or unlocked or yeah, staking periods? Yeah, you can come in and out of it. We're not going to make you stay for 180 days or whatever. And I do believe there's going to be a then, couple different options too. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then you've got, you're planning a Joker NFT collection. Uh, what's planned around that? Uh, that's a, that. Um, like I said, we're going to do like I said, Joker NFT collection. Uh, you know, male and female. Um, and we're only going to do a thousand. Uh, so yeah, yes. Open your mouth, Tim Show. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, like I said, male and female, we're only going to do a thousand of them and we are going to run them on ETH, uh, just because, um, you know, uh, NFTs do much better on ETH than they do on BSC. Yeah, no one likes um, them, you know, for some reason. yeah, the, the end game NFTs are, you know, they're, those are going to be able to run on, you know, the BSC, you know, that, that's fine. Cause you know, they're more for the end game stuff, but an actual line we want to run on Ethereum. We'll probably release. The, we'll probably you know release those in the next you know month or so. Are you going to do cross chain and bridge chain, uh, bridge NFT type things? Yeah. Yeah, that's certainly something in the in the in talks. You know, we we have to be kind of open and available to where metaverse goes, right? So. And have you got um, audits planned um, for the? Uh, LOL token before launch, after launch. Uh, how's that going to work? Sorry, what was the question? The audit. The oh, contract the audit. Of audit. The... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get that back today from Brew Labs. We actually got the audit. Um, so we did we did a two a two part audit. We did not only a security audit, which I think most people see security audits. Like when they see an audit, it's usually just a security audit. So we had that done. Uh, we passed. Um, we also went up, went and spent mo additional money on a logic audit because that's actually, I think, more important to make sure that um, when it launches, it behaves exactly the way that it's supposed to. Um, and it's worth spending a couple extra bucks to, to. I mean, I'm sure you guys, if you're, you're investing a lot, we've all been in projects that end up having some type of fatal flaw. Uh, and then they end up having to relaunch V2. And it's just really hard. And we don't want to avoid that. So there were there were some um, there were some issues with the logic audit, which was great. So they identified that the corrections uh, have been made, and they are now back with them. And we are hoping um, the contract is now good, but we're waiting for the the updated audit for the logic portion of it. And then I'm, I'm wondering what you're planning on the marketing after launch for the Crypto Community Club. Right. So, uh, you know, uh, pre-launch, like you said, we've been doing a bunch of, you know, AMAs and stuff. I tried to avoid, you know, just doing every single call group that came to us because, you know, they're not really worth any value. Um, and this is such a unique project. We really wanted to sit down with people and explain it. So, um, you know, post-launch, we'll definitely probably still get, uh, you know, a few AMAs with some more groups so they can, ex you know, so we they can see what we're about and everything. Um, we have some, you know, we have some good call, you know, some good calls lined up for, you know, day of launch and right after launch. Um, you know, those are kind of already set up and, you know, put to the side. Um, you know, we've, we're looking at, you know, some YouTube videos, some Twitter promotions, you know, all the all the normal stuff for your crypto. Um, but that's just like I said, that's just the first start, you know, the first part of it, because, you know, like you said, the the, the best part of our marketing is, you know, is the talent is us hiring the talent so that's when the real you know the real marketing in my opinion kicks in is when we start booking the comedians um because you know most projects can only advertise to crypto and that's it because nobody else really cares you know or a lot of people think crypto is a scam or if they can't find it on coinbase they don't care you know what i mean um but we can advertise to them we can advertise to the vr world we can advertise to the comedy world so we have a much, much bigger avenue, you know, that we can approach, um, which is, you know, extremely special for us. So, like I said, to start out right after launch, it'll be the normal crypto stuff. And then we're really going to ramp it up, um, you know, closer to the platform being released. We're really going to ramp up the, you know, the marketing, you know, much bigger stuff, published articles and, you know, see if we can't get some, uh, you know, some comedians to, you know, do some promotions for us and stuff like that too. So that's when it's really going to kick in. 
And yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if you're going to have like uh, comedy ambassadors. So if some big uh, comedy stars um, do a performance in the metaverse, you can approach them and ask them if they'll uh, promote uh, the metaverse and the token in the future. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely something we can do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, um, we've already gotten a uh, we've already gotten a shout out from one of our comedians that we're going to be dropping soon, um, which is going to be extremely awesome because, like I said, this guy is he's got a pretty pretty decent following on YouTube and Instagram and everything like that. He's a roast master champion. And he's, you know, like I said, it's 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 going to be it's going to be pretty awesome. We're going to get some we're going to get some cool stuff coming out. I don't know that I really want to spend any time with someone who professionally roasts people, though. Oh man, it's it's going to be brutal. Yeah, it's going to be brutal. It's pretty pretty fragile. We'll, we'll just say. Okay, great. So you're launching April first. Uh, the presale ends tomorrow. Um, I'm wondering if there's any whitelist spots and how much you raised in the private sale you had before the presale. Right. So uh, our private sale was 50 BNB. Um, I was. Um, it wasn't like we just, you know, hey, we advertise it out. Anybody who wants to get into private sale, we were extremely, extremely picky on who we let in. Um, we really, I, I should say I, because I don't think Connecticut would have cared if we, uh, you know, would have gave it out a little bit as much. But I was very stingy with it. Um, you know, I only wanted people in that actually got what we're doing, you know, like the project and, you know, see, you know, see the actual vision behind it. Uh, most of it, most of it was filled by our our little private group. I think we how much did we end up filling Connecticut? Uh, forty eight point five, like yeah, forty eight um, and a half of the fifty. Which obviously yeah. we could have found somebody with for the other B and B and a half, but we don't want like said, two computers lined up ready for launch. So um, I literally que I literally questioned everybody that wanted into the private cell, like at, like a hundred percent, literally questioned them, um, and I I failed several people. But anyway. Um, yeah, so like I said, that's our private sale. Um, and then, uh, what was the, what was the first part of that question? The pre-sales still on for another day. Can anyone get involved or is it whitelist or can you win whitelist spots if you join the telegram and what's the soft cap, hard cap? Gotcha. Uh, soft cap is 75 hard caps, uh, 200, uh, minimum buy is 0.5. Maximum buy is 2.5 BNB. Um, it is whitelist only. There are only going to be 750 whitelists total. Um, it's not going to be oversubscribed like a lot of uh, things that we want it to be exclusive. Um, there are still ways to win. Um, the sweep widget is over. Um, but anybody here in this uh, telegram, you know, if anybody wants one, I just po I just pinned a tweet before this AMA started. I pinned a tweet in our telegram. Anybody that goes and likes, retweets and comments that um, I'm going to pick out probably 15, 20 winners. Um, and give them whitelist spots. So, you know, anybody from here that wants, wants that, that's what you need to do. And I'll tell you, just to add, uh, we really did not want to have this massive hard cap. Um, again, we have the advantage of not needing capital. So we thought that the best thing to do for the project and for holders was to not try to make all this money per personally uh, from a launch. It was to have it be very exclusive. So we have a ton of buying pressure at launch. Um, I hate it when you get into a project that's like 6,000 BNB. And there is about 6,000 BNB that people want to invest in the project. And so everyone gets in to the pre-sale, it launches, and there's just no one else that wants it, you know? And, uh, and then it just becomes this massive Jeep fest. So um, we want this to be really tight and exclusive and we have the advantage of not needing capital from our launch to to realize our deliverable. That's very uh, uh, reasonable. Uh, you know, you're not going to launch at a huge market cap and then there'll be more buying pressure. Uh, and thank you very much for offering these whitelist spots to our investors at Wellcoin Talk today. That's great. Um, yeah, so I'll open it you guys. <laughs> and uh, I'll open it up now to the rest of the team if anyone's got a question for the comedy. It's so kind of a yeah, uh, Eglin. Yeah, I'm curious about. Uh, I, I like what I'm hearing. I, I enjoy comedy a lot, and uh, I was listening to you guys, and you you mentioned you already have the two pretty big comedians, if you if you ask me, on board. So I'm curious, what what was the the interaction with them? Like, did they have any idea what the metaverse is, what crypto is, how much handholding was there needed there to kind of get them on board? 
I, you know, that's the cool thing is not much, man. Um, you know, comedians like to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they like money. They like to perform. And, you know, and even some of the, you know, more established ones that don't really need the money. Sometimes they like a challenge, you know, uh, sometimes they like performing in front of a new crowd or a new town that they don't know, you know, because some of their jokes may not work and it, you know, forces them to, you know, reevaluate their set and, you know, work on things. So yeah, it's, it, it actually wasn't that, like I said, it wasn't that hard. Um, I'm, they're not, they're not super, uh, you know, familiar with crypto and everything. I mean, obviously everybody here, you know, everybody knows about it, but like I said, um, you know, especially once we showed them some of the graphics and everything, because I mean, obviously everyone's a little skeptical at first because, you know, you really have to make it as realistic as possible for comedy to work, you know. Um, but once we really showed them, you know, some of the stuff that we've got going on, they got a lot more excited. I, I, I yeah, bet we, they we did. Made it. Uh, I, so I, I we was going to say, sorry. Because. Uh, yeah. uh, I know they go around and test their material, right? And they work on new material and all that. And I think this could also be a huge opportunity for some of them. And not only just for the big ones, but even for the up and coming ones, right? You, you have a global audience, not just a local group of people. And you're probably, I don't know, uh, putting out your material to the same 30 or 50 or 60 people that joined that club, right? You, you're just in yep. front of a, a global audience and you can try stuff out. And at the end of the day, if, if you get 40, 50, 60, minutes out of it and I, I i think you can still go out and tour with the material that you have because the crypto is still quite new so you're not going to encounter the same kind of the, the people right that you see at the shows with the people that you see on uh, on in the metaverse right so it, i think that's a that's a really interesting way of, uh, of doing it too and you're offering some some great and great uh, value for for them as well it's not just them coming to crypto and yeah they're talking about your project but i think they can get some some really nice value out of it too so i think it's a it's a kind of a win-win yeah no yeah you know that's say one one yeah, thing about ahead. yeah one thing about um about that that is is really important in what you're saying and that, that was a great that's a great question and comment is we're trying to make this very simple for people who are not familiar with with vr at all it'll be literally as simple as if they don't have a vr headset our project will provide them one they're very cheap nowadays to get a, an Oculus Quest. Um, so we send it to them. It's a nice app. It's like another incentive for them to do this because even after they've performed, while well, they have this headset that they can kind of fool around with it, they don't already have one. But it'll be as simple as them putting on the headset, going to our, our launcher, and then they just perform, right? That's it. And if they're trying new material, like you're saying, it's a lot safer and probably less scary to to try new material in front of a VR audience, as opposed to going to the Chuckle Hut and, and getting up in front of a bunch of strangers and have to really feel that heat and pressure. Um, you brought up that, that reminds me of something that I think is really important that that didn't come up yet that I just want to make sure we say. So one, pro one problem that we realize is that VR headsets maybe have a 1% a one percent penetration rate right now. So what does that mean? Like, okay, so if only 1% of, of, of people have VR headsets, and aren't we missing this massive market? So we had, we've had that problem early on and tried to solve it. So it's, it's actually very simple. We're going to, our, our platform will work on any of the major VR headsets, Oculus or, or Meta, um, HTC Vive, um, some of the Microsoft ones, I believe, right, Dencho? Um, but more importantly, um, you're going to be able to watch shows from your laptop, your um your desktop your android phone your iphone and you can either watch it as if a camera was panning over the show and you could watch it live that way or you could use it as a 360 viewer um you know you could your phone has the ability and gyros to be able to show where it's pointing so you could also participate that way obviously the best way to to enjoy this would be with with the headset um but we're going to be like you can hold have an android phone and be able to watch and look around the space during the show just as if you were wearing a vr headset yeah and anybody can even rent a oculus by the day online so if anybody you know like oh there's this one show that i really want to be you know the full experience because i really like this comedian you can go online and rent one by the day they're really not expensive 
Yeah, or maybe they can just buy your token and then wait a few weeks, right? And they'll afford one. <laughs> if, there you go. I like that. Also very true. Right. Lots of apps. Yeah, I, 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 I love your idea, guys. And I think the, the, the vision that you have and the direction you're taking it could, could have like huge potential. So yeah, th thank you for coming today. It's really, it's really nice. And we're going to need really good community members. So please join because a lot of what we do and we add to our asset is going to be stuff that the community wants, right? We have the ability to do literally whatever. It's, it's, we're, we're only limited by our own imagination. And if we have a really strong community that's like, dude, it would be so awesome if we had a horse stable outside the, the comedy club that we could ride, I don't know, ride, ride horses around or something. I don't know. And if there's a lot of push for that, then that's an asset that we add. I, I don't know. Like there's going to be a lot of input we take from our community because it doesn't change like we can just do whatever whatever our community wants as long as it makes sense right we don't want to have it be a ridiculous and the that's, that's a dumb idea don't do the horse stable then joe let's stop working on that the, immediately but the uh the also the strong community really uh is one of the things that comedians are going to like um you know because like i said they promote their own shows like that's what they do like that's what they like to do when they start seeing the power of, you know, crypto shilling and stuff like that, they're going to be freaking blown away. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, some of these comedians, especially until they get big and famous, they don't get a lot of traction on social medias. So we can help promote their social medias, you know, the ones that, you know, the ones that perform with us. So they're going to get a lot of love from the community and they're going to want to, in turn, you know, give that love back. So it's it's going to be it's it's going to be great like i said there is no way better way to bring people together than with laughter and being that this is international and worldwide it's going to be the best way you know to bring people together from all different kinds of you know walks of life nationalities religions whatever it's going to be a lot of fun okay. awesome yeah sorry, sorry to... man, just was going to say uh... I can definitely see what you're saying because, yeah, I, I might retweet a, a Dave Chappelle show, you know, that I'm going to, but yeah. a, a lot of these smaller comedians, they're not getting the same engagement. And once they do see the kind of shilling that the, the crypto space does and how, how communities just jump on tweets, jump on on, on anything, basically, and reshare, comment, yep. and, and send it to their friends, I think they're going to be blown away. So, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll step aside. I'll let Glenn take some, some community questions. Yeah, th thanks for answering guys yeah no problem man. open it up to community members uh let's see Aisha, you had a question for crypto kind of comedy club team go ahead yeah thanks glenn i have a few questions uh first uh i was wondering that we are experienced to let people from all around out there a bit. having different religion culture norms and races to interact with each other i want to know that how are you planning to prevent racism hate speech can you hear me oh, yeah no i heard you i got your question yeah no i got i yeah i got the question so um that's a good thing about comedy is because you know instead of focusing on you know the differences you know, you get to kind of, you know, come together with laughter. You know what I mean? You get to kind of joke around about things. Like, that's what comedy is supposed to be about. Like, that's what it is. It's breaking down those walls. It's talking about things you're not supposed to talk about. You know, it's laughing at yourself, you know, laughing at your own country or whatever, you know, pointing out the hypocrisy in your own whatever, you know, like, that's what comedy is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an American. Like, I, I, I listen to a lot of other comedians from other parts of the world. And they joke about Americans all the time and it's not flattering, but it's hilarious. You know what I mean? Because it's, it, I mean, whether it's just completely absurd and it's just crazy that he said it or it's true, partly true, you know, and I can see like, Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, he's, yeah, he's got a point. All right. All right. You know, like that's comedy, you know, but as far as, you know, there, yeah, there is internet trolls and stuff like that. That is something that we have, you know, taken into consideration um, you know, anybody that does, you know, cross any, you know, absolute lines, like, like, we're not going to be censoring comedians because we want them to have a safe space to be able to express themselves. But we're also not going to put up with any, like, just absolute outright, you know, absolute, absolute outright hate, like, you know, that's, it's, it, that's not going to be tolerated. 
but it is yeah, a comedy club. You wouldn't want to do that anyways nowadays. But I think you're. I think she's talking more about other users. Is that? Am I hearing that right? Well, it goes the same way with users as the comedians, right. you know. We'll, yeah, have, we'll, have, we'll have reporting mechanisms so that if – here's the thing. We want it to be an enjoyable experience for people. So if we're getting reports that um, Douchebag69 uh, has been reported by 100 users uh, for being a douchebag, uh, well, then we're not going to want him there because we want the collective – we want the collective people to, to enjoy that space. It's supposed to be a fun spot. That's that that's funny that you can enjoy and laugh. Uh, and we don't want, yeah, we don't want people running around just yelling the N word and other people are just subjected to it because that does nothing for yeah. our project. So we'll have reporting mechanisms to make sure that users are um, behaving and they can lose the right to that space. No different than they could in a Xbox live or, or PSN or anything like that. There, there's the same type of mechanisms that exist. Yeah, and anybody that speaks out and you know does you know says anything you know like that in a in the middle of a show, we'll have moderators on hand at all times, and they're just going to get kicked out of the show just like a, you know any other heckler would at a comedy show. Yeah, and our comedians we're going to give a leash, and we're going to give a long leash too. That's art, and yeah. they should be able to express their uh, their comedy, and they're I mean they're they're public figures, so you know you can't really that you know, like. They, We've always we've been very upfront since the beginning. You know, it's a comedy club. You know, um, if you're one of the people that get your feelings hurt easily, this might not be the best place for you. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, let's just be real. Um, and that's fine. But, you know, it, it's a comedy club like uh, it's yeah. supposed to be edgy. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to push the boundaries. We will have clean comedy nights where we hire comedians that do nothing but clean comedy. So, you know, you can share with your family and stuff like kids. that, your kids and, you know. You know, we definitely will have stuff like that, but those will be specifically marked, you know, clean comedy, like family friendly. If not, you know, you're, you know, you're entering a comedy club. Like you should know yep. what you're entering. And if you don't like it, you log off. Yeah. It's easy to leave. Yeah, yeah she, bra she breaks it too much. Yeah, couldn't break. ask uh, very well. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll mute you, Aisha, because uh, it's breaking up there. Uh, we'll just move on uh, for Good now. Um, thank Syed, you. thank you. Yeah, for the questions. Uh, Syed, you had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Glenn. So I want to know that how many total viewers will be able to join a single show simultaneously? Yep. Potentially, you want to yeah. tell people so you actually speak. Yeah, we're going to have about um, 480 avatars in one one of our biggest stadiums uh, simultaneously. Obviously, they're going to be a little low res when there's that many. Um, but we'll be able to have an infinite amount of 360 viewers floating around the any show, really. Um, yeah, just infinite amount of... Imagine, like, live stream cameras, but with 360 viewing. And yeah, there's an infinite number oh. that we can do for those. All right, that's enough speaking, Dan. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. One more quick question. I was wondering that do you have any plan in future to host a comedy contest where uh, new comedians can register themselves and audition in front of the judges and viewer can vote? Uh, so this will be really fun. And then winner can also be selected? Yep, 100%. Yeah, yeah and there'll be winners of like open mic nights when we, if any of our holders want to give it a go with a nice five or 10 minute set. We'll do competitions to where the holders can vote on who they thought the funniest act was. And then that person will be awarded tokens, stuff like that. We think that'll be um, a good community thing. And then we also have talked about, say you have a bunch of D list. And I don't mean this begrudgingly because it's hard being a stand-up comic. If you've ever done open mic night, which I have, and it's terrifying and I'm not funny. Uh, it's probably more terrifying because I'm not funny, but um See, you had a bunch of guys that were only local comedians and you put out a feeler on social media saying, hey, listen, win a $5,000 prize uh, by comp competing or uh, for the funniest set in VR. And you have some real comedians that aren't don't, that aren't recognizable and they come in Four of them. They do they do a set. We get an hour worth of content for our holders and uh, then they pick a winner and then the winner walks away with five grand. 
Um, so that that's, I, I, yeah, there's a ton of, there's a ton of things. And that's why getting back to saying we need a strong community is because someone that was in an AMA came up with that idea and we love it. And it's easy for us to just do it, right? We don't need any permissions to do it. We're mom and dad up here, so. Yeah, you have everything set out, so it's easy. Yeah, that would be really great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saeed. Hey, love you. let's open it. Venice, you had a question for the Crypto Comedy Club team. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I do have a couple of the questions. So, uh, as you also have uh, features like we can touch and throw in the club. So, I was wondering, uh, that, uh, can we grab anything like a, uh, like a glass or, and throw it on comedian or there would be just tomatoes available to throw on the comedian or anyone else? So, we don't know, right? I mean, you're going to be able to throw stuff at, at people. But, you know, if we hire a big comedian, I don't Nobody's think we throwing. want to... Yeah, we don't want to like we don't want to we don't want the comedian to just have like some asshole throwing tomatoes at him the entire time, right? You know, so there's gonna there's that's gonna be a bit of a moving target, I think. Um, certainly, when you're not in lobby uh, or not in during a show, you're gonna have the ability, I think, to use up kind of however you want, throw a, a sword at a guy at a bar, um, or whatever. But yeah, there'll there'll be some limitations, I think. Uh, we'll kind of see how people behave. Yeah, with their tomatoes. But I know that's what you want to do. You're going to oh. be that guy because who comes up with that question? Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I would love to show tomatoes, and uh, I would love if you have eggs uh, available in your oh, club. Yeah, okay. Write it down. Smash, yeah, I would love to smash eggs on people's head. Perfect, guys. <laughs> you, you make a list. Join our community. Make a list of everything you've ever wanted to smash somebody with, and then we'll we'll, we'll have Dencho in his basement make it up. Yeah, we want to do one of those old watermelon and a hammer uh, routines by what was the name of that comedian? Well, yeah, that would be great. That, that, that yeah, he just smashed watermelons with a hammer. Yeah, we we talked about making uh, NFTs fungibles so that when you do throw them at a, at a comedian, it's like giving them a tip. You know, so they they take it, even if it's a tomato. Hey, it's a tomato NFT. They can sell back at the market. You know, and then. People can buy it and they get to throw another tomato or whatever, you know. Yeah. A lot of stuff in the works. Cool, yeah. And like you can sky's the limit, baseball bats, bar brawls, anything could <laughs> anything, yeah, anything could go. We'll have a um, mod let's to be have... dedicated to what we can throw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort of uh, PG or not eighteen uh gory and <laughs> Phantom Verse, you had a question for the uh, crypto comedy club team. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, I think you guys did a great job there. Uh, actually, uh, I want to ask a question for the uh, project owners and secondly for the people in charge of the AMA, please. So my question for the project owner are, uh, you guys are launching on Pink Show, right? No, we are no, launching for the on Sphinx. 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 Okay, so like, is there anything like an audit or KYC? Yes, uh, we yep. are publicly doxxed on the website. This is, we are the owners, the ones you're looking at on screen. We did an extensive KYC with the Ninja Lounge, and we have been audited. Yeah, so just, just about that real quick. So Sphinx Launchpad has different levels of certification. Uh, and in order to get those levels of certification, there has to be KYC, doxing, um, audit, all that stuff. So we're going to have a four out of four gold level certification through Sphinx. And the reason why we chose the mobile sale is because they don't take any of the supply and then dump it, you know, three hours later. Um, they require zero supply. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, question for the project. Uh, sorry, people that are hosting the AME, please. Uh, I would like to have an AME with your community, but I'm unable to DM the admins. So, is that possible? We'll set something up um, after the... AMA, um, no problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll get um, Abe to uh, contact you in a DM. Uh, I'll just put you on mute there because we're in an AMA. You sh should maybe ask that after an AMA. It's a bit naughty. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> we're running out of time here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, it's been great speaking to the Crypto Comedy Club team. Uh, it's a great original idea. It's exciting for our investors. 
Um, you know, we get obviously a lot of AMAs that are sort of repeating stuff that's been done before. You're thinking outside the box of a really cool, exciting idea with uh, the comedy clubs. Um, yeah, so that's great that our investors clear that today. And anyone who's got a question, we can get you safely over to the official Crypto Comedy Club Telegram. Um, it's in the chat, the website, and the Telegram, so you can get over there safely. If you've got any questions, do you have the VC open sometimes for investors to come in and have a chat, guys? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely going to have a nice long VC before pre-sale, before launch, and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, I'm on quite often, so I don't mind uh, turning on the VC and hanging out with people if they want to. I can't wait for this for launch to happen. <laughs> Just... So I can sleep ready. I can sleep normal again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heavy uh, uh, on a launch, definitely in a pre-sale. Yeah, um, so right thanks very much for coming today, guys. And I think we've got to spin the wheel now for two lucky winners, $50 each. And I've racked you all the dizzles doing that today. Ooh, I spin the wheel. I hope I win. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get it up in, uh, in just a second here.